Welcome back everyone to the inventory system tutorial series. This is episode 2 and in today's video we shall display some widgets on screen to see our picked up items. So let's go to the UI folder, create a new user interface widget blueprint and let's call this UI item data. So this is going to be a single icon for every single one of our items inside of our inventory and here what I want to do is add a border to the canvas panel then I want to right click the canvas panel and replace this with a child so this gives us a full screen icon now what I want to do next probably let's see mm, let's create a new binding for this and we want to change the brush of this so yeah make sure you change the brush uh, set the brush binding uh, this will allow us to create a slate brush so if we make this one it gives us some input values we need to fill out the image to fill out the image create a new variable call this item data and make sure that this is set to s inventory structure type then we can drag in this variable we can break the value whoops don't set the horizontal alignment no let's break the s structure and connect the icon to the image there we go so this will create us an image but before it actually can do so we need to provide some information for this item data so let's go to the event graph and on event construct uh, let's get actually let's create a new variable for that and let's call this item which is the s slots structure type and this one needs to be instance editable and exposed on spawn so we can provide this once we are creating this widget then we can drag in our item we can break the slot structure break the item structure then from the data table we can get data table row and let's connect the execution and the row name and this is going to give us an item so now we can connect our item data to row found and we can set this from the outro there we go so now this is going to work perfectly hopefully <laughs> so now let's create another widget which is going to be the UI inv panel now I will do the same thing create a border right click the canvas panel replace with a child then the next thing what I want to do is add a vertical box and this is pretty important that we add a vertical box that is set to fill so that we would fill the entire um, inventory panel if we do not fill the uh, whole inventory panel later on we might have some issues with uh, drag and drop operations once we drop an item into our inventory uh, so that's why I'm using the vertical box then I'm gonna add a scroll box to this because let's say I have a lot of items let's set this to fill let's say I have a lot of items that are filling a lot of space so I want to scroll down these and also I want to add a text um, for now let's center this to the middle and make it black so that it's visible and here will be some here will be here will be uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later and for now what I want to do is also add a uniform grid panel so this is going to allow us to display our uh, slots very nicely and let's add this to the scroll box let's make sure that this uniform grid is set to the left bottom uh, left top corner let's make sure it's not set to fill otherwise it's going to stretch out uh, the icons if there isn't enough of them so let's make sure this is set to be in the corner now for the name let's give this so let's call this grid panel make this into a variable now mm, so I already have some numbers in my mind for the child layout so since we have this uh, widget already let's let's create another one so that you know what why I'm s just selecting those specific numbers so this widget is going to be the UI inventory and this is actually the, the widget we're going to display and it's going to be the whole screen widget so for this one again we are adding a border but we are not setting this to be the parent of the widget um, this is going to be 300 by 500 and this 300 is very important so keep in mind that it's 300 units wide so this is the 50 and minus 550 let's rename this to be the inventory panel 
make it into a variable go to the graph on event construct we are creating a widget create widget and the widget is our inventory panel widget which we can add to this inventory panel right here so add a child and the child is this widget like so so now once we display the UI inventory this widget right here inside of this location it's gonna spawn us this widget so now, like I said, this is 300 in the x-axis, so I know that uh, I want to have three icons in a row, so that means I have 100 units for every single one of my icons. Uh, but I want to have some padding, so I will add this like 10 padding, and I will give this a little lower than 100 value. Oh, actually I need 10, not 100. So I will give this 96 pixels in both axes, there we go so it will stretch the uh, icon out uh, to these values right here now in the graph on event construct let's see let's cast to our character third person character get owning player pawn so this widget owner right here then let's get our inventory so player slots let's do a loop for each and now in the loop body we can create create a widget and the widget is our item data let's connect the item to the ri element so we provide the item information and then let's drag in our uh, grid panel and we can add child to uniform grid now this requires us uh, content which is the widget and it requires us a row and a column so let's uh, let's create these values right here so first what we need is to know how many rows uh, how many slots per row we want so for that I will create a variable call this slots per row make this into the integer then from the ri index I will do this to float so convert this to a float so let's drag in the slot slots per row and do the same thing to a float there we go from an integer to a float then we want to divide both of these and then the end value can be truncated truncate I don't know even if that's even a word but we need a node called truncate and the value is the row so this is going to calculate our row. Now for the column, uh, let's drag from one of these and let's do a division, whole and reminder. So the div dividend is the index and the divisor is slots per row. And from this reminder right here, we can again do a truncate and the value is the column. There we go. So this is creating us a column, but this is not going to uh, be good enough because it's going to create very, very, very small icons. So from the return value of this child, what we want to do is set the horizontal alignment. And also we want to set the vertical alignment. And we want to make sure that both of these alignments are set to be filled so that it would fill out the whole space it, it has. So now with this being done, well, let's make sure. So we are creating the inventory widget. We are creating the UI widgets and I believe everything should be working just fine. So now in our third person character, what we can do is create a keyboard I event and on pressed, I want to do a flip flop for now. So the first one is going to be create a widget which is our UI inventory then from here we can promote this to a variable and I'm gonna call this UI and this variable right here actually doesn't need to be the UI inventory type it can simply be a user widget uh, so that it can store any widget we want it to so now let's drag in our UI once it's set and let's add to viewport so now this will display our widget on the screen. Next, what I want to do is from the UI, I want to get the owning player. And as this owning player, I want to show mouse cursor set to be true. There we go. Check that. 
and then I want to set input mode game and uh, game and yeah game and UI and the in widget to focus on is going to be our UI variable. Now for the B route of the flip flop, what I want to do is again from the owning player, I want to show mouse cursor set back to false. And also from this owning player, I want to set input mode game only. So this will make us focus back on the game rather than the widget. And once this operation has been done, we can drag in our UI variable and we can remove this from parent and this basically removes it from screen. And of course, make sure you connect the set to the B route over here, like I have it. Now with this being done, we should technically be able to see something, press I there we go, here will be, let's pick up some items, so I'm picking up 8 items and we press I and there is only one. And of course there's going to be only one item if in our inventory panel this slots per row is set to 0, so make sure you give this a value, so in my case it's going to be 3, um, yeah that was a little bit confusing, so let's pick up some items again, press I and there we go. Now we can see our items nicely displayed in a grid panel. There we go. Also I've added the scroll box to this uh, panel so that it, like I said once it's filling up so that we can scroll this down and it is still uh, visible quite nicely. So that's going to be it for this video and a little, a little info. Um, this uh, inventory right here from the player slots, I'm not going to display it here. Uh, this is going to be the backpack location where I'm going to display things that are in my backpack if I have one. Um, and this text will uh, say if I have or I don't have a backpack. And I'm going to have my uh, equipment equipped uh, things that are with me in this side right here. But for now, um, this is going to be so. So this is how you display the items and yeah, in the next video, let's see, maybe equipment, maybe a backpack, we'll see about that. But yeah, like always, thank you guys for watching, leave a comment down below with your suggestions, what you want me to add to this inventory system. And uh, yeah, we're gonna add as many features as we can. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned.